Amen. Let the church say amen. Come on, let's stand on our feet and give God the best praise that we can. Amen. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm glad to see you. Say, neighbor, we're going to worship together. The Bible says, let everything and let everybody that has breath praise the Lord. Did you wake up with breath right now? Can you breathe right now? If your heart is beating, you ought to thank God. If you're not in any pain, anybody, anybody in the house not in any pain, let me see your hands. The hands that are down mean that you're in, you in pain. You're in pain. You better turn to God. If you're not in pain, you better lift up your hand because tomorrow you might be in pain. The Bible says, let everything, let everybody praise God. And so this is a joint venture today. If we don't have worship service like we ought to have it, it's not because of one individual, but it's because you didn't join us in praising God. The Bible says, lift up holy hands. Paul told, his, told the people of his time, I would that all men and women would lift up holy hands. And some other psalmist said, we ought to praise God with a loud praise, amen? And when you praise God, you feel better. People don't feel better sometimes because they come in and say, oh, I'm not going to join in the singing. I'm not going to join in with Reverend Macon in the praising of God. The Bible says, let us praise God together. Let's bow our heads. Eternal God, our Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this moment that you've allowed us to come into this place. We are grateful that you have kept us seven more days. We were here last week and we praised God. And so we've come back to praise you again. We don't know what the future will hold, but we know that you hold the future in your hand. You hold today in your hand, you hold yesterday in your hand, and you hold tomorrow in your hand. And so right now, we've got a chance to praise you in this beautiful sanctuary that you have given us, these beautiful lots and parking spaces you allotted to us, the beautiful street that we came down, we're grateful for that. And above all, we're grateful for the person next to us, the person behind us, the person in front of us. We're grateful, God, for the choir that is ready to sing to the glory of God and the preacher who's ready to preach your holy word. So God, if we had the tongues of 10,000 men or angels, we couldn't utter enough thanks unto you today. Thank you, Lord. Can somebody say thank you? Can somebody say praise the Lord? Can somebody say hallelujah? Come on, let's join in with that beautiful choir that's going to sing with us. Lord of love. 
just say the blood still works. Can you bump high five or give somebody the knuckle, whatever you want to call it, hit them on the side and say, hey, neighbor. Say, hey, neighbor. Say, hey, my friend. Whether you know it or not, the Lord has given me a blood transfusion. You know, when you go to the doctor and you've got an illness and you don't have the blood that's right or enough blood, they give you a blood transfusion. And it heals the thing that is ailing you. Well, I need to tell you that 2,000 years ago on Calvary, God did a blood transfusion for me. He took my sinful blood, took it out of me, and put in his son's blood. Ever since that day, I've been running, and I haven't gotten tired yet. Ever since that day, I've been calling on his name, but I've been claiming nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Not my mama, not my daddy, not my education, not my friends, not even my enemy. But what can make me whole again? Nothing. Can you shout nothing? I wish I had some praises in the house. I wish I had some early risers this morning. I wish I had somebody would join me in praising the Lord. The Bible says, let everything that has breath, you ought to praise the Lord. Woke you up this morning. Started you on your way. You wasn't hooked up with all kinds of tubes going in outside of your body. You wasn't buried last week, but you rose, you rose in your right mind, reasonable portion of health and strength. Don't get me started up in here. Don't get me started. I I'm with the 8 o'clock service. You know, this is the intelligent group. These are the old folk. But you know, the older you are, the more you ought to praise God because he's given you more years. When I look back over my life, hills, storms, incrossable river, enemies placed at my footstool. I need to tell you, the older you get, the more you ought to shout. I'm going to preach it in how. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you too tired for this in the morning. Look at your neighbor behind you. Say, neighbor, this is too much for you early in the morning. Just turn. You know, you know I don't know why y'all ain't so friendly to people. Y'all just stand by yourself. And you got fire right next to you. You got somebody in the house came here on fire. There's other folk came here cold. But, but when you come to church, I keep telling you, you need to find that fire pocket. And, and you, you, you know how you know somebody's on fire? Because they walk into church smiling. They are happy and they're thankful to God. They don't walk in there like this. They walk in like this. Because they are on fire for the Lord. Now, I done told you. Come on, give God some praise. I, I told you there's some hot spots in the church. And there's some friendly people in the church. I, I want you to just go find you at least three friendly people. And just bump them with your, with your arms since you don't want to touch them. Or you can bump them with your feet. Find your three people that you think are on fire. Now, if they, if they look at you funny, they ain't on fire. Don't go next to them. Just bump them with the side of your shit. Now, 
why the choir is singing that. Now why the choir is singing that. I, I want you. I, now the, while the choir is singing that, because we're worshiping God, I want you to go back to the fire that you found. And I want you to ask them a question. What shall I call my new fire? Go find the three fires that you found and ask them, what shall I call you? Because you need to know their name because you're going to come in one Sunday feeling bad and you're going to need some fire. And tell them, what is your name? And glory. They all belong. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. And we're going to have prayer time. How many of you are thankful today? How many of you think that you'll be thankful next Sunday? Next Sunday is what we call Thankful Sunday or Thanksgiving Sunday. And if there's any Sunday that you need to show up, it needs to be next Sunday. Because God has brought us in going to ask him to do some very powerful things in 2025. Everybody else is worried about the political atmosphere. But I know that the Lord is in his holy temple. I've even told my pastoral group that next year is going to be an incredible year. It's going to be a powerful year. For those of us who keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Now next, next week I want you to come for a particular reason. Because it's Thanksgiving. Coming up that Thursday. But there's a special reason for me why I want to thank God. I want to thank God because of the person who created Thanksgiving Day. It was not George Washington. He had many Thanksgiving Day that he called, but it was not him who officially created Thanksgiving Day nationally as a national holiday. It was actually Abraham Lincoln. He did it in 1863. Now, all of you who know a little bit about your history, 1863 was the year he signed the Emancipation Proclamation. And, and he called for a day of thanksgiving prior to it because he really wasn't thinking about the slaves. He was thinking about the union and uniting the nation. And so he called a day of thanksgiving and created a national holiday. Thanksgiving Day. Say Thanksgiving Day. In 1863, what did he also sign? The Emancipation Proclamation, where he frees the slaves. Emancipation Proclamation it had to be ratified in an amendment. We know that, 13, 14, and 15. But he freed the slaves. Say, free the slaves. In 1863, coincidentally, the same year that he called for a national day called Thanksgiving Day, and five million slaves were emancipated, so-called freed, in the same year. So I think that here at Mount Zion, we ought to celebrate Thanksgiving Day because five million black people were freed. Amen, somebody? I want you to bring your family, your friends, and everybody. I'm going to have a special surprise for you also. But next Sunday is the day, Thanksgiving Day, and we're going to commemorate 5 million black people who were beaten, robbed of their culture, robbed of their heritage, family divided. Men had to go down the river. That's what. That's where you get this phrase, down the river. We're going to send you down the river. Down the river was where whites had taken slaves' families and divided them and sent 
certain kind of slave who was rebellious down the river to another plantation. But we're going to celebrate the day of Thanksgiving. Now, let me ask you one last question. How many of you have a business? Let me see your hand. A small business. You can call it small, whatever. Yeah, small business. If you have a sidekick or a side business, I want you to come up here first. I want you to come up here first. All of you who have side businesses, come up first. Come up first. Come up first. Come up first. Because we're going to do something next year that's going to blow this city out of, out of their thinking. Now, these are people with businesses. Sis, come here. What kind of business do you have? I do customer service from home and, and landscaping. Turn, turn around. Look at them. She does customer service and landscaping business. How many of y'all need landscaping business every year? Huh? We old now. We need this. Come here, sis. Tell them what's your name. Vicky. Vicky, turn to them. What kind of service do you have? I am a pers vegan personal chef, and I have uh, food at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. She has a mortgage company. What kind? No, I'm a personal chef. She's a personal chef. She fixes vegan meals. How many of y'all know y'all need to cut down on them barbecue ribs? <laughs> vegan meals. Have you ever served with a large group of people, maybe a famous person or somebody? Can you tell us who it was? All right, who was that famous person you served in your vegan? I'm going to be finished. How many short served? Uh, NBA uh, star Chris Paul. Chris Hall? Chris Paul. She served Chris Paul. Wait, come, come back here. You're supposed to be right here looking this way. What kind of business you got? Uh, I have a property management. I maintain property for the foreclosures, banks, and everything. Oh, turn around here. Turn around here. I want one of them foreclosure homes. I want you to look at these three. Now, all the business people got a business. I want you to turn towards the congregation. Turn towards the congregation. Here, here's what I want us to go back to. I want us to go back to the old days where we trusted each other. These people have all kinds of businesses. Look them in the face. Terrence, come here. Terrence, they, they, what kind of business you got? I have a transportation and I transport kids with autism. Wow. Turn towards the congregation. Terrence has a transportation business that he transports autistic kids off on the spectrum. Can y'all see him? To me, he looks like a criminal. To me, he looks like a thug. To me, he looks like he just got out of jail. Uh, to me, turn back, turn, turn to him, Trent. I got a point. To me, he looks like if, if I see him in a dark corner, I, the pastor of the church, is going to run from him. Now, every one of you know that this man is not a criminal, not in jail, will not hurt a fly. One of the kindest men in the world. What am I saying very quickly? I'm saying we've got to learn to trust each other again. And these business persons have come up here to have prayer and they want you to know that you can trust every one of them with what they're doing. Why? Because they are Christians and members of the Mount Zion Church of Oakwood Village, Ohio. What am I saying? Very quickly. I'm saying it's Black Friday. Say Black Friday. And these are the people who are overlooked on Black Friday. You're going to take your money and you're going to give it to Macy's. You'll never see it again. You're going to give it to Higby's. You'll never see it again. Black Friday, I wish our people, meaning everybody, would not go out and spend the money on stuff that they know they don't need. Spend it on something good but spend it on 
for us for this week, black businesses, if you can. If you can, find a black business. If you need something, empower them. And when they say to you, well, you know, my product costs a little, maybe $5 more or $10 more, then just give them the $10. Give them the extra money. Because everybody knows that both black businesses are not making money. The average black business makes less than $10,000 a year in profit. And so I want you to consider these folks. Would you come up? You can turn back now this way. Would you turn? Those of you who would join us in prayer for these businesses and other things that you're having, if you'll pray for these folks who have said, hey, I'm a, I got a vegan ministry and I'm a, I've served some of the biggest entertainers, sports persons. I don't know who this Paul guy is. He sounds like a basketball player. Does he play for the Cavs? Well, you better find the other four that plays for the Cavs and see if you can get them. Say it quiet. Come on down and pray for these folks. If you want to sit there, you can. If you've been standing long, you can sit. It's okay. But you can pray. Father, we just come down here today, most notably to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. Yes, thank yes. you, Lord, for starting us on our oh, way. Yeah, yeah. Heavenly Father, we pray right now, God, that the best is yet to come. Oh, yeah, we know yeah. and believe that those that have come to the altar, they come for many different things. They come for healing. They come for deliverance. 
Father, we know that you are the one that can deliver. We know that you are the one that can heal. Father, today, I pray that you would touch your people right now. Help them to know that you'll never leave them nor forsake them, even on today. So God, as our head is bowed, as our hearts are humble, we feel your presence in this place. We know, God, that you're moving. We know, God, that you're still around. We know that you're in the prayer answering business. So we ask right now, God, that you would answer our prayer and hear us today. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. Give our black businesses today. and our businesses a great big hand. Amen. And you congratulate them. Thank you, choir. And now our announcement. Join us for Baptism and Rebaptism Sunday. Register at the Connect Desk. During the remainder of the year, join us in blessing lives. Throughout the holiday seasons, our food pantry is providing meals for families. Our youth are preparing care packages for disadvantaged kids at Laura's home. Our Serve 100 ministry is going to deliver items for 100 people to our local nursing home. And we also are preparing shoe boxes of gifts to children around the world. We want you to participate by going to the Serve 100 table in the foyer and joining in. You can also donate weekly by placing Serve 100 on your offering envelope. Join us for a special Thanksgiving service on Sunday, November 19th. If you are full of gratitude towards His grace and mercy, this is a Sunday you can't miss. We want everyone to bring at least two family members to the church on that Sunday. And the person who brings the most family members will receive a special gift. Do you know we have a ministry to the nursing homes? We are always looking for people to join this ministry and do nursing home visits. We pray, we support, we sing, and we bless. You can help today by submitting a card of encouragement. Bring in a card and write a special note and drop it off at the Connect Desk. We are still under construction on many phases of the ministry, and we are believing God for the goals he has set for us. We need you to do three things. One, pray for the vision of the church. Two, prayerfully give a special offering above your regular giving toward our in-year offering. And three, watch what God does in your life for your faithfulness. Hey, I got 10 dimes in my pocket. I got a dollar, 10 dimes. God says, take your 10, take one, give it to me. God says, you can keep the other nine. Can y'all see that? Y'all can't see it. All right. Maybe this will help you. I got 10 raisins. God says, when you, get your, when you earn your 10 raisins, give me one. I'm going to let you keep the other nine. Y'all still ain't got it. I got 10 peanuts in this little thing right here. God say, when you first get the 10 peanuts, don't get greedy and start cracking them open and spending them all. Before you spend or do anything with any of these peanuts, take one out for me. Some of y'all are messing up because you give, listen. Some of y'all are messing up because you're giving God what's due to him on the back end of your bills. The scripture says, honor the Lord with the first fruits of all your increase. Before you pay anybody else, pay God first. You can keep the other nine. I got 10 grapes right here. Give God one. Enjoy the other nine. 10 strawberries. Okay. 
Give God one. Suck on the other nine. Give God his and live off the rest. I got 10 grapefruits. God said, give him one out of 10. Keep the other nine. Ten apples. I'm just trying to show y'all what it goes like. Give God one. Keep the other nine. Ten oranges. Give God one. It's like clockwork. Ain't no ma magic to it. Keep the other nine. Ten pairs. Give God one. When you do it right, see, see, let me tell you what happens. See, some of y'all don't give God. The ten, you you keep it, and what happens is all the egg gets sucked out of your bag, so it's just kind of flat. But when you open up your heart to give God one, you get some air. You get you get something in there to. Look at that. Look at that. God says, give me one out of every ten. You keep the other, the, you keep the other nine, but just honor me this way. Show me you believe that you have faith, that you believe in my kingdom. You want to advance my kingdom. Mount Zion on the move for Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise for what he's doing here at Mount Zion. Stand on your feet and turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi 3, 6 through 12. As we all stand at the attention of God, as we prepare ourselves for the giving time, we're thankful to all of those who givers. Are there any givers in the house? Just say amen. We're thankful to all of those who give and bless God and bless the Lord's work. And we pray that God will continue to bless your house because you bless God's house. As you're reading in the text, let's read this responsibly. Even to those watching online, thank you for giving and for participating. You can give online through the Givelify app or mzov.org or our text to give at this moment. The Bible says this. It says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say? Even from the days of your fathers, ye have gone away from my ordinance, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye say, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with the curse, but ye have robbed me. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there shall not be room enough to receive it. You divide for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit for the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Let's read 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thankfulness, thoughtfulness, thinking unto God, thanking God that all will ever be and all will ever have 
It's because of what he's done in our life. Know today we are stewards of what God has given us. And all he asks is, will you give me at least a tenth of what you have and give it back to me, knowing and believing that all you have comes from me, comes from the Lord. Can you take a moment to thank God for what he's given you? All this week, somebody has been thinking about what you don't have. Well, this is the moment to thank God what you do have. Thank God for what he's given you. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We bless your name. Thank you, God, that we can participate in this worship period through giving. I pray right now that you will continue to bless our church in this ministry as we're needed for such a time as this. We pray right now for even this next year that we'll be going into very soon. We believe, God, that you would watch over the people of God and even those that are in covenant and obedience with you in this new year. Touch us, God, and thank us and help us to continue to do a mighty work. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said. Amen, amen and amen. amen. I'm going to ask all of those that are bringing a tithe and offering, you can come right now to the tithe and offering basket. of God, all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. God, a great big hand praise for what you have done and him as you bow your heads and whisper a word of prayer and thanks even to God. Pray for the message. Pray for the messenger. If there's something that you desire to hear or for God to say to you or you need to hear from the Lord in a very special kind of a way, the Bible says, ask and ye shall receive, seek and ye shall find, keep on knocking and the door will be answered unto you to you even now God can speak to me and say something to you that I never knew that you needed to hear and I may say something to you and you will hear it in a different kind of a way and you can walk out of that door saying I feel blessed I feel privileged because I have heard word from the Lord come on pray right now pray for me eternal God our Father we're believing these prayers not because of who we are, but because of who you are. You said to us that we are to enter into your presence, that we are to enter into your glory, that we are to join venture with the things that you are doing in our lives. You 
have said to us that the steps of a good man, woman, are ordered by the Lord. Help us, O oh God, even now to understand that sometimes the ordering doesn't match the way we think it ought to match with the way we think our walks ought to be. But thank you, God, for being there for us, even in those challenging moments. In Jesus' name we pray, and all the people of God said, amen. Can you give God a great big hand praise as you go to your seats very quickly? Amen, amen. I want to use a scripture today that I think that will lift you up. I think sometimes we come to church and we just need to be lifted up. Yes, we can sing those songs that King Jesus will wipe away all burdens away and those kinds of things. But I want to use a scripture, say a scripture, that you might be blessed with. It is, not a, it is not a scripture that comes out of the Psalms, though the Psalms, you can turn that down just a bit, though the Psalms are in fact uplifting. When you wake up in the morning, you ought to consider reading a Psalm, say reading a Psalms. God is our refuge in time of trouble. That's a pretty good Psalm, is it not? Everyone knows the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's a good psalm. And sometimes it's good to read from the Apostle Paul, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But there is another text that I'm going to lift up that I lifted up a few moments on last week at the second service. And it's going to come out of the book of Exodus, and I'm going to give you a chance to find the book of Exodus. I know it would be challenging to some of you. Some of you will have to flip through the whole book, of all the books in the Bible, 66, before you find the second book in the Bible. I, I want to lift it up because I know that there is one great fear that all of us have, and it's called the fear of failure. The truth of the matter is none of us want to be called a failure. But rather, we want to get on what I call the road to success say the road to success. I wish I had a PowerPoint up there like that. The road to success. Everybody wants to be successful. How many of you want to be successful? Let me see your hands. How many of you want to be a failure? Let me see your hands. You come to church on Sunday morning just to reinforce how can I be a success on my job? How can I be a success as a father? How can I be a successful husband? How can I be a successful employer or employee? How can I be successful financially? How can I become wealthy? Larry just put up a, a piece on there about how to become wealthy. Some of you just went to sleep, say, oh no, not again. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's why some people are poor because they are always doing again and again what they ought not to be doing. I wish I had two witnesses in the house. <laughs> success. We want to be successful. I want to be a successful pastor. I want to lead a successful ministry. I want to be the most successful husband that Marilyn has ever had, as if she would never have another one. I want to be a successful father to my two sons. Success. There are some texts up there that will give to you uh, if you want to read some of the successful te texts to help you become successful. Write them down, read them later on, and perhaps you will become successful. And the truth of the matter is that we live in a day that every time we're attempting to be successful in our lives, something is always pulling us down. Have I got two witnesses in the house? Something is always pulling us down. But I've got a text that is going to pull you up. And if you are tired, if you have been through something this week, if you've watched the news of what's going on politically, I need to tell you, first of all, I just turn off the news. Yeah, I'm not trying to get into all that stuff. 
I've been telling people all week, they've been asking me, what do you think about this party and that party? What do you think about this president and that president? I've been telling them all week, that ain't my fight. And, 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 and politically, my people, being African, black people ain't got enough folk to shift uh, things around here in this country anyhow. Turn to your neighbor and say, he didn't mean to say that, but he said it anyhow. I, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. In fact, we used to sing the song, we are soldiers, not in the political realm, but we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. And so I'm going to stay on that battlefront for a long time. But here is my text. It's going to come out of the book of Exodus the 15th chapter, the 15th chapter, how to have success, say how to have success. And the 15th chapter, verse 27, is going to talk about a place called Elam, say Elam. And the children of Israel are going to land in a place called Elam. But before they do so, they have experienced three kinds of tiredness. They are tired. Say tired. They are tired. They are exhausted. They are exhausted. They are exhausted. They are in exhaustion. And they are also tired because they are frustrated. Say frustrated. You can be tired and become exhausted in life. You can be tired and become frustrated in life. And there's a third thing that will make you tired in life, and it's called fear. Say fear. And these children of Israel, these, these, these marchers, these ancient people are going to experience all of them, but they're going to experience also success. They're going to experience all of them, but they're going to experience success. Say success. They're going through the trials and tribulations of life and the disappointments of life, the frustrations of life, they are going to be exhausted and they're going to become afraid, but they ultimately are going to be blessed in the, in, in the, in the future. They're going to end up in a place called Elam. Say Elam. Here's the context of the text. They had been in, they had been in, uh, in Egypt for 400 years oppressed by Pharaoh. 400 years they have been oppressed by Pharaoh. And God is going to work a deal with Pharaoh and say to him, if you let my people go, then I won't do anything to you. Mm -mm -mm, Y'all need to get this. But if you mess around with my people continuously, I've got, a may, I've got a way of straightening out the wrongs. Y'all need to get that right there. God has a way of straightening out the wrong. We used to say it. God can righten the wrong things that are being done to you. And so he decides to send these plagues and ultimately Pharaoh lets the people go. And they're headed towards the promised land. And they are only three days in the journey. Mm -mm -mm. And they get tired. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it doesn't take you long to get tired in life. Especially when you have been through a long listing of things that have tired you out. I wish I had a witness. I, I see y'all don't want me to preach this this morning. I already preached, so I ain't going to work hard. But I'm going to work good. And, and so, 400 years. They are tired. And the people who are more tired are those who started out the journey earlier. And the Bible says that the latter generation is going to have to die out so the younger generation can move forward. Sometimes, watch this, a whole generation of people can be tired. Am I talking to any generation here today? I think the builders are tired of all this. Those who are 70, 80 years older are tired of what's going on. God sometimes has to take a whole generation of folk. I, oh, I, I wish I couldn't. 
Whoa, there are some people who are, who are in their late 70s that I wish he would just move on out of here. Ooh. What are y'all looking at me for? I'm talking about y'all. I wasn't talking about nobody else. <sighs> I ain't preaching, I know. But they're three days in their journey, and before they can get to success, they have to become distressed. Before they can move into a good place, God has to send them through some bad places. Before things get better, I'm talking to two people here, things have to get better. The text says that as they're routing themselves towards the promised land, only three days in uh, the wilderness or the desert, they move towards bitter waters. The place in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the 15th chapter along the 26, 27, 28 verses, it said that they go to a place called Mara because they are now thirsty. And they need something to drink. And so they go to Mara, and at Mara, they begin to sip on the water and discover that the water is poisonous. It is, in fact, bitter. Say, bitter. But sometimes you can't get better until God allows you to get a little bitter. They start the grumbling. Do I have any grumblers in the house? I, I know you don't complain when God lays a burden on you. I know you don't complain when you get a certain kind of illness. I know you don't complain when you have to go down through the valley called the shadow of death. I know you don't complain when you really can't rub two nickels together or a quarter. I know you don't complain when your enemies start to rise and up around you. I know you don't complain when the atmosphere gets unclear. Perhaps I'm the only one. They have to go to, they're going to get to Elam, but they have to go through Mara. Say Mara. And while they're out there in the desert, they, they are tired. Let me just get this, and then I'll call it a day. They are tired, and there's three kinds of tiredness that they are experiencing. They are experiencing exhaustion. Say exhaustion. Sometimes in life, we get tired and become exhausted. We exhausted physically, and we get drained, and we become depleted of our strength, and there's no more energy left. But I need to tell you, weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. The children of Israel experienced this kind of tiredness. They had crisscrossed the long desert, the sand, the sun, the sweat. But thank God that led them to Elam. Elam was a place of oasis. And here's what it says in the 27th verse. It says, and they came to Elam where there were 12 springs of water, and 70 palm trees. Here's what it says in the text. They came, then they came to Elam where there were 12 springs and 70 palm trees and they camped there near the water. So they were frustrated. They were exhausted. And what God did is that he gave them some rest. The Bible says, come unto me when you're tired Come unto me, those that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Sometimes you will never get no rest unless you are filled with heavy laden and labored down. Have I got a witness in the house? The people who qualify for God rest is those who have been through the storm, those who have been through sleepless night, those who have been through sadness, those who have been through disappointment, those who are down and out of sometimes God places us in Mara territory so that he can lead us to some fresh springs and some palm trees in oasis in life. Have I got a witness in the house? You might get bitter for a while, but don't worry about getting bitter for a while because God is making a way out of no way. He's getting ready to give you some health and strength. He's getting ready to put some friends around you. He's going to make your finances better. He's going to make your fracture 
future more fruitful, I need to tell you, don't worry about bitter water because God has something better for you. Have I got a witness in the house? Just hold on a little while longer. You may be tired right now. You may have to go to the doctor. He may have to give you surgery, but sometimes God corrects you through those kinds of things because you are exhausted. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, take a rest. Say, neighbor, stop grumbling so much. I told the church last week, I came home one time and I was grumbling and mumbling about everything going on in the church. And Marilyn got so sick and tired of me, she told me as if she was my mama, Larry, go to bed. Go to your bedroom now. Well, I went. Because I didn't want to be under the bed. I wish I had two witnesses. Sometimes all you need is some rest. Don't, don't. Give God some praise. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, all you need is some rest. And there is also a second kind of tiredness. It's tiredness caused by frustration. Emotional tiredness. When you get this kind of a tiredness, you need to remember you are walking in God's destiny for your life. And that if you're walking in God's destiny for your life, God will always provide. And, and that God has an oasis waiting for you even in your frustration. Now, when you're frustrated sometimes to this degree, sometimes you need to go get some other help. I tell old folk all the time, if you're frustrated, go to your doctor. Your medication is off. That's why you're acting nasty. That's why you're being mean. I excuse all old people over 70, including myself, who is not yet there. Have I got a witness? They used to come to me on the mother's board talking about mother so-and-so is so nasty and sister so-and-so is acting up and old ushers used to be in the back of the church and they would say, well, you know, they don't know how to treat people and all of that. Pastor, you need to get rid of them. I said, no, be kind to them. Their medication is just off. They just need to get a balance on their medication. Just look at somebody who looks young as you and say, you need to get your medication balanced. Boy, y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Somebody know you who you are and they know who you are at home too. They don't know who you are right now. You know, I remember that family that got out, got out of the car and they were so nice and kind to each other, pulled their Bibles out and everything. And they had two kids in their uh, back seat, and, and when they got out, they were just loving on each other. And the kids say, what happened to them? They were just yelling and screaming at each other before they got to church. Tiredness of frustration. You remember those two frogs, don't you? They fell into a large can of cream. And they whipped around, tried their best to hop out, and they couldn't make it. Finally, one frog got so tired and quit. He said to himself, what's the use of it? He said, and he flipped, and he, he flipped his, his flippers, and in one last sight, he, in despair, he began to sink to the bottom, say, sink to the bottom. But the other frog was made of tougher stuff. He said to himself, I may not make it. He said, I too may go down but I'll go down kicking. So he kept kicking and churned the cream until it became butter. And with his feet on a chunk of the butter, he leaped out. Sometimes you just got to keep on whipping it. In spite of it all, the truth of the matter is what the fight is, whether it is a fight for healing, for faith, for character, for business, or for better, for a better word, being negative and pessimistic will never work. <laughs> Tiredness caused by fear. Say fear. Now, fear is really just unbelief. You can rid a lot of your tiredness or a lot of your fears by belief. You've got to learn how to believe God. 
You remember very quickly those 12 disciples had went out on a boat while Jesus said, cross over to the other side. And he went, goes up into a mountainside to pray all night long. And a storm emerged. The wind began to blow and the thunder began to roar and the lightning began to flash and all of a sudden Jesus decides to get out on the water in the midst of the storm. You need to get that. God always comes to you in the midst of your storm. When things are looking dark and dreary, God always show up. The Bible says that he shows up to the disciples and he's walking on water. I need to tell you that God always walks on water. He always walks where you least he expects to see him walking. And he walks on water. And the disciples are out there on the boat. And he all of a sudden calms the storm. But there was another time that he was inside of the boat going to sleep on a pillow. And the storm emerged. And the disciple says, Carest thou not that we perish? And the Bible says that when he says that Jesus wakes up and he says uh, he calms the storm, he calms the sea, looks at his disciples and says, why are you so afraid? Where is your faith? Where is your belief, sister? I need to tell you that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he's given us the spirit of power. He's given us the spirit of love. He's given us the spirit of power and love and of a sound mind. In other words, he's given us some sensibility about stuff. He will put it on our minds and if our minds are stayed on Jesus, we can shout hallelujah, hallelujah. I need to tell you that when the storms of life arises and you get afraid, just tell God to be a heart fixer. I wish I had a witness in the house. And tell him to be a mind regulator. Have I got a witness in the house? God would be a rock in a weary land. God would be a way out of no way. God will calm the storms in your life. God will make a way out of no way. God will be a friend in an, up, in an unfriendly world. I need to tell you that the Bible says that sometimes all you got to do is learn how to wait. I wish I had some volume in here. Wait. I wish I had a witness in here. Wait. I wish I had somebody out there. Wait. I wish I had somebody who knew how to wait. Wait when things are dark and dreary. Wait when things are not doing what they ought to be doing. Wait when your friends are turned your back on you. Wait when your family have crossed over the, the other side of Jordan. Wait. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, he shall do something for you. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not go weary. They shall walk and not faint. Anybody here ever walked when things are dark and dreary? Anybody here ever walked when things are dark and ugly? I need to tell you, oh, you need some volume in this. They that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Stand on your feet if you ever mounted up with wings as eagles. My, 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 When you get tired, just wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. As you bow your heads in the word of thanks unto God, as you bow your heads in Just give God some praise in the house. Whatever goes on in 2025, it only means that God is getting ready to make us better. And he's getting ready to strengthen us like never before. Do you believe that today? I keep telling you, I don't care who's in the White House. I don't care how many bad picks you get. As long as you got Jesus on your side, that's enough. As you bow your heads, if you're here today, if you're here today, you do not know Jesus and the free pardon of your sin, now is your time. You can't wait till the end of the year. Got to remember, every year has its number. 
24 is not over with yet. And 24 still has a number that it's got to get. And so that's why you got to walk on a daily basis by faith and not by sight. And if you're not sure that if you were to die where you are right now, that you will go to heaven, you may be 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. It doesn't matter. You may be 10 years old. But you need to know for sure that you have accepted Jesus Christ in your heart and that you believe in your mind, body, and soul that he died on the cross for your sin. And if you believe that, the Bible says you are saved. And when you're saved, say, when I'm saved, I'm always safe. Say, I'm always healed. I'm always saved. If you're here today, you have not accepted Jesus Christ. And the sign that you are saved is that you've been baptized of water. As every head is bowed, is there anyone in the house who has not been baptized of water? Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. I don't see a hand lifted up. If you're here today and you don't have a church home or a church, you can say, that's my church home. Or maybe you've been coming to Mount Zion for a long time. Lift your hands up and you're not a member of the church. Lift your hand up. As every head is, is bowed, the saints are praying. I see no hands. I see one hand. Yes. I see two hands. Thank you for being honest with me. There was someone who said they not a member of the church. Maybe you're looking for a church home. We would love for you to unite with the Mount Zion family. We're not perfect, but we're pretty good. We won't fail you. We won't hurt you. We won't harm you. We are a loving family. And if you want to, you can just step out of the house right now. Maybe you come with your friend come up to the front and we will accept you into the church. This is a good time to come to the Lord. Come on, let, come on, come on. Somebody praise. This is a good time to come to the Lord. Good time to join the church. It's better to be in a good church temporarily than never to be in any church at all. If you're afraid to come up front, I understand. There's a card in front of your pew rack and what I want you to do is I want you to fill that card out. Maybe you don't want to join. Just connect with us. Fill out that card. That's it. Get that card and just connect with us, and we'll stay connected with you. We'll send you emails. We'll send you Facebook page, uh, posters. We'll send you the things that we're doing. Uh, and, and for right now, just be a Connect member. And I pray that people who are looking at us online will just become a Connect member of our church. Connect with us. There's that card, mountzion.org. Connect with us. You're going to need a church like never before in 2025. And we're the kind of church that if you got a pandemic, we'll take you through a pandemic. You'll be all right. Amen, Mount Zion. Eternal God, our Father, we ask that you would bless these persons who have said, I'm going to connect with the, the Mount Zion ministry. Thank you, God, for the marvelous, powerful worship experience that we had today. Bless us now. Be with us now, God. As we go out this week, let us feel your presence so powerfully in our lives and those who have come here today to say, I need a shift and change in my life and I need something powerful to happen on the positive side. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that that thing will happen in their life. I pray for families right now. I pray for unity in the nation, in the world. And I even pray for peace in the Middle East, God. I pray for peace all over the land and country. Next Sunday, God, as we leave out today, let it be on our heart to constantly remind ourselves that we have so many things to thank you for. But above all, we want to thank you for 1863 when five million slaves were free. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Give God a great big hand praise. Turn to your neighbor and say, I met you earlier today. I can't remember your name. What's your name again? Amen. Consider yourself dismissed. Give the choir a great big hand. They sounded like the pastor today. Amen.